Um, and translation is part of it. What we've got a couple practical issues at the get-go. We have manuscript, and you, Caleb, you already hinted at this. We've got manuscript variances when it comes to Luke Acts. So Acts 15, Acts right. 21 are part of that. And then we've got translation issues. So so two, two different um, realms that can kind of muddy the clarity are are kind of already are initially in, uh, confronting us, and that's the manuscript history, and then translations. So, and you could say, well, that's always true. So, sure. So, to some degree, that's always true. A third is ideological conviction or presupposition that someone brings to the text before they even read it. So, for example, if I'm if I think the Old Testament, you know. If I, the basically the summary that we started with was that um, Acts 15 teaches that believers, I don't remember exactly what it said, believers don't have to observe Old Testament laws. Okay. I would say that person probably already had that belief and conviction before they even started reading Acts 15 whether they read it in Greek or whether they read it in this or that or 20 different translations, they came out with the same belief that they started with. So we're going to encounter that sort of thing. We're going to encounter situations that that's back to kind of our earlier topic. Am I running around with thoughts that are frauds? Do right. I have, do I have false ideas that I'm clinging <clears throat> to, even though there's, voices outside telling me that it's a fraud that it's a that it's not a true idea so the question is what's our method well the the next thing we have and this is what is good is yeshua makes it clear for us that we are to differentiate the word of god from the traditions of man they're not the same they're they're different file folders right there's the words of god and the <clears throat> words of man or the work of god and the works of men and from the beginning of not only Luke, but if we just start with Acts, the book of Acts, which is written by Luke, he demonstrates from Acts chapter 2 that the, the Holy Spirit is being poured out and that numbers are being added to the ecclesia every day who were appointed to this salvation from Jews and then Gentiles. And that this is a work of God. We see this in Acts 5 when Gamaliel, remember, they're, they're like, what do we do with, you know, these, they keep preaching Jesus in, in, the, in the temple and they're healing people and they want to, the high priest wants to silence them. And it says Gamaliel, and we learned that, you know, Paul learned from Gamaliel, who was a teacher of the Pharisee, said, look, you can't, if this is God doing this, you're just, you're going to just be fighting against God. And if it's a work of men, it will, it'll fade. It'll, it'll end on its own accord but if but you don't want to be found fighting against god so luke introduces us to this idea from gamaliel in acts chapter 5 well we see that develop and this is the same thing that's happening here in acts 15 is it it says acts 15 1 starts out with it says certain ones came down from judea to antioch and were teaching the brothers right well those brothers are believers. Well, what does that mean? It means they're new creations in Messiah. It means they 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 belong to Yeshua, whether they're a week or you know years in in their walk with Yeshua, they're new creations. What does that mean? That means they are living stones, right? They are living examples uh, or souls that are new, participants of the new of the Brit Hadashah of God writing his Torah on the hearts of people. In other words, it's a work of God. The true believers, the true ecclesia is always a work of God. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button and check out more videos from Messiah Matters. Messiah Matters.